Yeah, hi folks. Uh, let's take a look at some data now on uh, mixed strategies and begin to see whether or not some of the subtleties that we were talking about earlier actually uh, play, play themselves out in, in real uh, incarnations of these games. So in particular, um, we mentioned that um, mixed strategy Nash equilibria can have some counterintuitive features and they uh, can, be, can be somewhat subtle to solve for. So uh, we might wonder whether people actually really obey uh, the predictions of, of Nash equilibrium in these settings. So let's have a look at um, professional soccer penalty kicks. And we'll look at, at uh, some data that was gathered by Ignacio Palacios Huerta in, in 2003, um, where what he did was he actually looked at a, a whole series of FIFA games that he recorded off of uh, uh, television, different, different shows. Um, he looked at 1,417 penalty kicks in, in the Spanish league, uh, um, uh, uh, England, uh, and Italy, and so forth. And so he's looking at, at high-level um, soccer and looked at penalty kicks. And what he did is he, he kept track of whether people kicked to the left, they kicked to the center, they kicked to the right, and uh, whether they were using their left leg or their right leg. Um, and, and we're going to look just at the simplified version that corresponds to what we analyzed earlier, which is just a left kick, right kick, and the goalie can either move le left or right. Um, which he actually analyzes a, a subset of the data on, on page 402, and we'll, we'll look at what data he actually has in, from that paper. Okay, so um, here's, uh, based on, on what he finds uh, out of these 1,417 uh, penalty kicks, these are, are sort of the averages. So in situations where kickers go left and goalies go left, um, kickers win 58% uh, of the time, Goalies win 42% uh, of the time. In situations where the kicker goes left and the goalie goes right, then the, the kicker wins 95% of the time. Um, if the kicker goes right and the goalie goes left, they win, uh, the kicker wins 93% of the time and so forth. So, so these are the actual numbers that uh, Ignacio finds um, based on these uh, recorded um, penalty kicks from the 1,417 games. Okay, so we do see that there's uh, biases here. There's some advantages and disadvantages. Um, so uh, going left against right is slightly better than a, for a kicker than going uh, right versus left. Um, not so different, but uh, left left um, compared to right right, we see a little bit more of a difference. So this is an asymmetric game. It's a fairly subtle one. Um, so we have to see whether or not uh, we're going to end up um, with the Nash equilibrium in this game. Okay, so why, why don't we do the following? Um, given those numbers, you we can pause the video and uh, solve the game. So you can uh, take a, a look at this, try and figure out what the probabilities that the goalie should go left. So let's say the goalie is going to go left with probability PG, the kicker is going to go left with probability P sub K, solve for P sub G and P sub K um, with this matrix so you're going to put PG here, 1 minus PG here, PK here, 1 minus PK here, and try and solve for the, the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium of this game. So take a few minutes, pause the video, try and solve that, and then we'll come back and look at what the solution looks like. Okay, so you've had a chance to, to look through that. Um, now let's see what actually is happening in, the, uh, in this game. So what we need is we need PG to make the kicker indifferent, right? So if, if the kicker kicks left, we can figure out what uh, payoff they get. If the kicker goes right, we can figure out what payoff they get. So in particular, the goalie's probability of going left versus right must have the kicker indifferent. So when we look at the kicker's payoff from going left compared to their payoff to going right has to be the same. You solve that out, uh, and what do you end up with? PG is, is uh, roughly 5 twelfths in this case, or um, 0.42. So if we, we do the same for the kicker going left versus the kicker going right, you can go through that, and uh, you know setting the the goalies payoff from going left versus right being indifferent, what do we end up with? We end up with PK, uh, the probability that the kicker goes left is 0.38. So in terms of what we found, we found that goalies should go left 
42% of the time. That leaves them going right 58% of the time. Kickers should go left with probability 0.38, which uh, then puts them going right with probability 0.62. So we have a, a simple prediction based on the actual frequencies with which kickers and goalies score when they go left versus left, right, and, and so forth. So, so if they were doing this um, facing populations of people going left and right, and, and these are the payoffs, then this is how they should be behaving. Okay, so what happens in the data? Let's take a peek. So the Nash frequencies, goalie going left, 42% of the time, goalie should go right. 58% of the time, kicker should go left. 38% of the time, kicker should go right. 62% of the time. What do they actually do out of 1,417 games that were recorded? So we have a non-trivial amount of data here. Goalies, 42.58, right on the money. Um, kickers, 40.60. So very, very close to the 3862. So in fact, when we see professional soccer players playing and we look at the payoffs they're getting, they're playing almost exactly the Nash equilibrium in terms of the mixed strategy. Or in this case, given that this is a zero sum game, this is the same as the max min strategies. And uh, you know, if, if we ask a, a question of exactly how they learn to do this, it's not necessarily true that they're sitting down and looking at a matrix and, and calculating these things uh, directly. But over time, they get it, you know, they should be indifferent between going left and right. So if, if the other players are uh, going in one direction or the other too often and they start adjust, they, they can get a, a better uh, payoff from going one direction or the other, they'll take advantage of that. And so things have to adjust in, in keeping them indifferent over time. So, um, you know, do players randomize well over time? Yeah, pretty well. Um, and, you know, uh, Ignacio's paper goes in much more detail on this and looks at, you know, at, at, at things like uh, um, how uh, well they do in terms of mixing, you know, is, do they, if you wanted to mix 50-50, one way to do it would be to go left one time, then right the next time, then right left the next time, and so forth, and just alternate. That's obviously not randomizing. Uh, and so instead, there's a question of whether people randomize so that they're really unpredictable over time. And Ignacio finds that they do fairly well even in terms of the strings of, of kicks that they have. Um, there's other questions you could ask. You know, how well do they perform under pressure? If it's a big game and it's a very important kick, do they tend to go towards their stronger uh, foot? Do they become predictable? Um, well, you know, in, in fact, now you see more and more professional sports teams hiring statisticians, hiring game theorists, keeping track of exactly what's going on in terms of other, other teams' tendencies. What do they tend to do in this situation? What do they tend to do in that situation? What's our best strategy in response to that? So, you know, going through and analyzing these things um, is, uh, has become uh, more of a trend. Um, in other sports, there, there's similar analyses. There's a very nice paper by Mark Walker and John Wooders, the American Economic Review, um, looking at tennis uh, and serves. So, um, you know, which side you have to serve into a, a given area? Do you serve towards the, the left side of it, the right side of it, the center? Which, how does it depend on whether you're right-handed, left-handed, which directions you're going in and so forth? Um, so they an, uh, analyze a, a series of professional tennis uh, games. And similarly, they find that minimax play is, is uh, a fairly good uh, predictor of exactly what's going on. Um, and you know, there, there's also questions of how well people really mix over time. But uh, the, the, the equilibrium predictions do fairly well. OK. Um, you know, we see there, there are going to be games that have mixed strategy equilibria. Uh, in particular, zero-sum and competitive games will tend to have them in, in a lot of situations. Um, players have to be indifferent between what the, the players they're, they're facing. That gives you some very uh, interesting comparative statics. Um, you know, we asked the question, do we really see randomization? Uh, we found, you know, yes, in professional sports we do see uh, randomization. Um, there's lots of other things in the world where you see randomization. So predator-prey games, you know, in nature. Um, if you come up upon a squirrel, a squirrel thinks you're trying to catch it. What does it do? Um, it randomizes a bit. So it's very unpredictable to figure out which way the squirrel is going to dart when you're walking by it. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's following essentially a, a, a randomized strategy. 
um, many bi business interactions. So if we look at things like audits, uh, tax auditing, um, that's, that's a game where you're going to see a situation where it's competitive um, and tax authorities don't uh, uh, necessarily want you to know exactly whether you're going to be audited or not. They want, might want you to have some uncertainty. So they can't audit every, if they can't audit everybody in the population, if there's a cost to auditing, that's going to be a game where they're, they're going to mix and that random, uh, randomization might help uh, tax authorities. So there's a lot of, of settings where random, random checks, random audits um, are, are, are essentially optimal strategies as, as part of some game. And where Nax, uh, Nash Equilibria, in particular mixed strategy Nash Equilibria, um, will help us understand those things.